wasn't worth my time, chicken boy. Chicken boy? Say that to my face, you limp noodle! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best voice acting performances in 90s movies. Three wishes to be exact, and ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. For this list, we'll be looking at the most remarkable vocal performances in animated films of the 1990s. If we missed any of your favorites, let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Jason Alexander as Hugo, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasi, what's going on out there? A fight? A flogging? A festival. You mean the Feast of Fools? Uh-huh. All right, all right. Pour the wine and cut the cheese. Jason Alexander made a name for himself on Seinfeld in the early 1990s, playing Jerry's insecure best friend, George Costanza. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. One of the things that made his character so recognizable was his distinctive voice, which you might have noticed pops up in a very famous 90s Disney movie. In The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Alexander voices Hugo, one of the magical stone gargoyles who Quasimodo befriends on top of Notre Dame. Ah, poor man! I thought he'd never leave. I'll be spitting feathers for a week. Though Alexander is typically sullen as George, his Hugo is quite a bright spot in the film, providing advice and comfort for Quasimodo in equal measure. Paris, the city of lovers, is glowing this evening. <sighs> True, that's because it's on fire. But still, there's l'amour. With Hunchback, Alexander proves that he can be an affectionate friend, even if it's just with his voice. Somewhere out there in the night, her heart is also a light. And I know the guy she just might be burning for. Number 9. Minnie Driver as Jane Porter, Tarzan. Now here's one you might have forgotten about. 1999's Tarzan was the final film released during Disney's Renaissance era. While it certainly wasn't the most memorable from that crop of movies, it still has an excellent score and wonderful work from its voice cast, which includes Minnie Driver. I'm in a tree with a man who talks to monkeys. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. Driver plays Jane, the adventurous Englishwoman who falls in love with Tarzan during her travels. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I'm Jane. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I'm Jane. Not only did the Oscar-nominated actress give life to Jane with her voice, some of her mannerisms were also used in animating the character. We would have a lot of exaggeration, the mouth shapes, and her eyebrows would, you know, really drop down to show concern. So she was really expressive. So we took that and put it into the design. <laughs> At this point in Driver's career, she's already had tons of charisma and romantic leading lady experience, which she brings in abundance to the role of Jane. I suppose we should say goodbye. Number 8. Meg Ryan as Anastasia Romanov, Anastasia. Anastasia features one of the most stacked casts of any animated film of the 1990s. From John Cusack to Kelsey Grammer to Hank Azaria, it's really a who's who. By the unholy powers vested in me, I banish you with a curse. While we can't deny the comedic evil power of Christopher Lloyd's Rasputin, in this case, We've got to go with the titular role. What are you circling me? What, are, what were you, a vulture in another life? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Anya. It's, it's Anya. Meg Ryan's performance of the Anastasia character feels like it could have been pulled straight from any of her live-action romantic comedies. Dimitri, mm -hmm. do you really think I'm royalty? You know I do. Then stop bossing <sighs> me around. Ryan's Anastasia is feisty, funny, and strong. In short, she's everything a young girl could want in a leading lady. I found what I was looking for. I found out who I am. I found you. Pair that speaking performance with Liz Calloway's incredible singing stylings, and you've got yourself a princess for the ages. Number 7. Ray Fiennes as Ramses, the Prince of Egypt. 1998's The Prince of Egypt has a way more star-studded cast than you might remember. Be still. Pharaoh speaks. 
Beyond Val Kilmer as Moses himself, you've got Sandra Bullock and Jeff Goldblum as Moses' siblings, Miriam and Aaron, respectively. Please, Moses, you must believe. That's enough. You were born of my mother, Yocheved. Stop it. You are our brother. Now you go too far. Not to mention Helen Mirren, Patrick Stewart, Danny Glover, and Michelle Pfeiffer. We could go on. But among that incredible lineup, one actor stands out for his impeccable embodiment of the villain, and that is Ray Fiennes. I am the morning and the evening star. Ramesses, it shall be uh, as I say. Fiennes voices Ramses, Moses' adoptive brother and eventual adversary. The English actor is menacing in the role, but also brings a certain empathy to his performance that might be lost with a lesser skilled actor. I bear the weight of my father's crown. Do you still not understand what said he was? He was a great leader. And to think he does all of that with just his voice. I do not know this god. Neither will I let your people go. Ramesses, please, you must listen. I will not be the weak link. Number six, Susan Egan as Megara, Hercules. Hercules is another one of those Disney movies where it seems like every name involved is a big one. So instead of subtracting two years from your sentence, hey, I'm gonna add two on, okay? Give that your best shot. James Woods brings just the right amount of sleazy villain to Hades. And who doesn't love Danny DeVito as grumpy old Phil? Yeah, I had a dream once. I dreamed I was gonna train the greatest hero there ever was. So great, the gods would hang a picture of him in the stars. But for as many household names as were in the cast, there were actors like Susan Egan, who may have had lesser recognition, but even more skill. Let's see, what could be behind curtain number one? Meg. Egan was primarily a Broadway actress before landing the role of Meg, and that probably explains the professional level of theatrics in her performance. I'm no hero. Sure you are. Everybody in Greece thinks you're the greatest thing since they put the pocket in pita. With more than enough sass to go with that Disney princess sweetness, Egan proves that she's indeed the belle of the voice acting ball. Congratulations, Wonder Boy. You'll make one heck of a god. Number 5. Eddie Murphy as Mushu, Mulan. By the late 90s, Eddie Murphy was already one of the biggest stars in the world. From his run on Saturday Night Live to a slew of hilarious 80s comedies, he certainly was a gift to viewers around the world. But in 1998, a Disney movie introduced him to a whole new audience. Of course, I'm travel size for your convenience. If I was my real size, your cow here would die of fright. <laughs> Down, Bessie. In Mulan, Murphy voices the role of Mushu, a small dragon who attempts to prove his worth by guiding the titular character as she joins the army under a guise. Punch him is how men say hello. Murphy provides some great comedic relief, but also showcases a softer side as Mulan's helper. You risk your life to help people you love. I risk your life to help myself. At least you had good intentions. Mushu is, without a doubt, one of the best sidekicks in the Disney canon. Just remember, dragon, not lizard. Ready, Mushu? I am ready, baby! Like me! Number four, Jeremy Irons as Scar, the Lion King. In 1994, a host of Hollywood and theater legends joined forces to bring us one of the greatest animated films of all time. What am I going to do with him? He'd make a very handsome throw rug. Sazu. The Lion King features a slew of amazing performances from the likes of Rowan Atkinson to Nathan Lane. If you live with us, you have to eat like us. And James Earl Jones. We are all connected in the great circle of life. But if there's one thing this phenomenal cast proves, it's that good guys really never win because it's the villain who completely steals the show. Oh, live the king. Even Darth Vader himself will be impressed with Jeremy Irons as the evil Scar. Umba. What have you done? The wildebeest he tried to save me. It was an accident. The character design of Scar is slinky and suspicious, and Irons perfectly matches his vocal tics to that blueprint. It's voice acting at its finest, and we couldn't be more grateful to be spectators of it. Did it so they can hear you. I killed Mufasa. Number three, Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Potts, Beauty and the Beast. 
When you have such wonderful songs from the likes of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, you need the vocal talent to match. We'll be human again by midnight. Oh, it's not that easy, Lumiere. These things take time. So, it makes sense that so many of the cast members of Beauty and the Beast come from the world of Broadway. Theater legend Jerry Orbach certainly proves his worth during Lumiere's rendition of Be Our Guest. Come on, unfold your man. You take a glance and then you'll be our guest. We our guest. Be our guest. But the inherent warmth Angela Lansbury brings to Mrs. Potts cannot be overstated. With dessert, she'll want tea, and my dear, that's fine with me. Her jovial British accent and motherly demeanor bring just as much comfort to us as they do to Belle. That was a very brave thing you did, my dear. We all think so. But I've lost my father, my dreams, everything. Cheer up, child. It'll turn out all right in the end. And Beauty and the Beast would be nothing without her masterful delivery of the titular song. Tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme, Beauty and the Beast. Number two, Tom Hanks as Woody, Toy Story. A buddy comedy, but make it animated. Toy Story broke barriers when it premiered in 1995. However, we don't think it would have been quite as successful if it wasn't for the stars at its helm. My fault? If you hadn't pushed me out of the window in the first place? Oh, yeah! Well, if you hadn't shown up your stupid little cardboard spaceship and taken away everything that was important to me! Tim Allen is perfect as Buzz Lightyear, but Tom Hanks' Woody took whatever expectations we had and just outright shattered them. Hey, a laser! How come you don't have a laser, Woody? It's not a laser, it's a... It's a little light bulb that blinks. What's with him? Laser envy. Hanks is such an important piece of casting in the movie, partly because of his uncanny ability to make us root for characters we might otherwise dislike. But why would Andy want me? Why would Andy want you? Look at you! You're a Buzz Lightyear! Any other toy would give up his moving parts just to be you. Woody's particular brand of orneriness somehow adds to his charm, and we all have Hanks to thank for it. You just can't help but love that grouch, no matter how much he grinds your gears. I've set my laser from stun to kill. Ah, oh, great, great. Yeah, and if anyone attacks us, we can blink him to death. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Julia Louis-Dreyfus as Princess Ada, A Bug's Life. This comedy queen shows her vocal prowess as the miniature princess. Battle stations, everyone! This is common drills! Come on, everyone! You know your job! Chris Sarandon as Jack Skellington, the nightmare before Christmas. He's the mayor of our hearts. And Halloween Town, of course. Fantastic! Now, why don't you all practice on that, and we'll be in great shape. Sally, I need your help more than anyone. Susan Sarandon as Miss Spider, James and the Giant Peach. Sarandon spins an intricate web of a performance using just her voice. Everything we did was part of the brilliant plan of James. It really did work, didn't it? Tim Curry as Hexus. Fern Gully, the last rainforest. Leave it to Tim Curry to bring life to an evil pollutant. I'm beneath me, moon, slime up above. Vin Diesel as the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant. Vin Diesel has always had a heart of gold. Wig out. It means crazy. You know, like, uh... <laughs> no, no, no! Don't do that! That's the kind of stuff that makes them shoot at you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Robin Williams as the Genie, Aladdin Throughout the 1990s, there were only so many projects that didn't feature Robin Williams, from live action to the world of animation. Human tails? Human tails? Humans don't have tails. They have big, big bottoms that they wear with bad shorts. And while he might have lent his voice to other animated films, such as 1992's Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, nothing can top him as the genie in Aladdin. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck! Williams lays the blueprint of how vocal acting should be. Just be yourself. 
And this is not just the nostalgia talking. Everything about the performance is just downright amazing. I'm in the mood to help you, dude. You ain't never had a friend like me. The way he delivers comedic gem after comedic gem, combined with his genuine warmth, make this an all-time great, especially for a family-friendly movie. And what better way to make your grand entrance on the streets of Agrabah than riding your very own brand oh. new camel? We certainly will never forget how special Williams was, as he immortalized himself with performances like this. Wish for something outrageous. Say, I, I want the Nile. Wish for the Nile. Try that. Uh, I wish for the Nile. No way! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.